for Education Matters, a weekly look at the real people and real stories in education across North Carolina. Welcome to Education Matters, presented by the Public School Forum of North Carolina. I'm Keith Poston. Today on the show, we're discussing new class size mandates for kindergarten through third grade from the General Assembly and the dramatic impact they are already having in some schools across North Carolina as a new school year begins. We'll also discuss what it may look like next year, barring changes by legislators. We'll talk to teachers, administrators, and school board leaders all on today's program. Before we tackle our main topic, we open with our headlines, a quick scan of education headlines across North Carolina and the U.S. State Board of Education members expressed shock last week upon learning just how seriously the General Assembly's newly enacted principal pay plan could hurt the state's most experienced principals. Average pay for North Carolina principals ranked 50th last year nationally, so to address it, lawmakers passed a new pay plan that moved away from salaries largely based on experience to so-called performance-based plan that relies heavily on student test scores to calculate pay. But the plan's design has produced scenarios that result in some veteran principals conceivably earning as much as 30% less than what they earned on the old pay schedule, as well as possibly setting up a disincentive for the best principals to go to more challenging high poverty schools where growth in test scores is much harder. Well, it's another week and another round in the battle between the State Board of Education led by Republican Bill Covey and the State Superintendent, Republican Mark Johnson. The latest public skirmish involved the hiring of a new chief academic officer who reports to both Johnson and the state board. Johnson had encouraged the board not to hire Stacy Wilson Norman. She's a 17-year Durham Public Schools veteran with a court stay that was set to expire this week that would grant him more power over hiring and firing. The board moved ahead with the hire anyway, citing DPI staffing concerns from a high number of senior resignations, retirements, and layoffs due to budget cuts. The board filed a motion to extend the stay, which is being heard this week, and Johnson filed a motion in opposition. The state's new North Carolina Innovative School District has named 48 low-performing elementary schools that are eligible to be taken over by a yet-to-be-named charter school operate that will run these schools. You can see the complete list on our website under Education Matters Resources. ISD Superintendent Eric Hall, who's pictured here from a recent show, will narrow the list of eligible schools and present his recommendations to the State Board of Education at its October meeting, and the first two schools that could be selected in November or December. Finally, the State Board approved North Carolina's Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, plan last week. ESSA is the new federal education law signed by President Obama that replaced No Child Left Behind signed by President George W. Bush. While the North Carolina plan passed, concerns were raised about the continued reliance on standardized tests to evaluate how schools are doing. Superintendent Johnson and DPI's federal policy director, Lou Fabrizio, emphasized that the state has flexibility to make changes down the road. Remember, you can visit the Public School Forum's website at ncforum.org, click Education Matters, and read more about each of these headlines as well as all the other topics we cover each week.